For the first time in its 43 years of great racing, Road Atlanta in Brazelton, Georgia, plays host to a round of the Grand Am Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. Look at that, Carl Gimple looks to the inside. Again, the grid was set on championship points with these. Oh, oh run him wide there, that's Carbonell. And he's gonna spin. I don't know if he got help there or not. Now, this is for the race lead because the 13 of Nick Longy, the Rum Bum Porsche, has spun itself out of the lead. Let's see if we can pick up what happened. I'll well, see if he got some help here. Yeah. Jade Buford was looking really aggressive. This is down into turn six. Yeah. And that's kind of a bit of a no man's land you want to go. I mean, you really just sort of like flow a lot of speed into that corner. And a pretty aggressive move by Jade there. Taught by the Rash organization how to work the car around Daytona. He said that really wasn't representative of the pace of the car this year. They've also had problems. Dorsey had that broken brake line, which is a really a freak incident. Oh, Ooh, more drama in no, this is that's a leader. Derek White is in the wars. This one is going nowhere now. Look at the damage to the front end. Here we go. Mancusha to the outside is going to be the last of the late breakers there. He's got it, but the line is with Matt Bell. He forces the issue down to the inside. Great racing here. Nice and clean. Nick Mancuso takes the lead for Multimatic. Side-by-side uh, -side breaking He's again. He's going to get attacked, I think, here. Oh, oh dear. Yeah, I guess so. That yeah, looked... Sister oh, car. That's no. a little, uh... That was a full-on break lockup. Now we'll see how 80 picked up the class lead in the ST class. The damage to yeah. <laughs> the contour. Yeah, I keep waiting for pieces to fly off. Here we go, three wide. <clears throat> oh, that was three deep. wide. That was this. really deep. What a <laughs> move there by Colin Blam. Taking the lead. You know, and uh, she, she, she gets excited. Woo! One of the Roush Mustangs sideways down the hill. That'll be Billy Johnson. <laughs> that was a handful. Oh, you don't want to touch anywhere in through there. Yeah, that's wild stuff. And Look here at comes She's 12. hanging in there. She is hanging in there. She's <laughs> wow. not going to give it up to the championship lead. Now that's up. That is, go, girl. That's a gutsy maneuver right there to inside to somebody in the turn 12. This is a pass for the ST lead. That was Terry Borshell getting around the 80. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ooh, that's a two time just. Rolex 24 hour winner. He knows how to get the job done. Out in turn seven. One of the corners you don't expect to have problems with. You see Chris Puskar go off the outside. Front wheel drive car, he's trying to save it, but it hooks on him, comes straight across, makes big impact, almost turns upside down, breaks the radiator. Oh, who are you talking about a save? Look at this. Ooh. <laughs> Holy cow. That was a lot of handful of cars. Oh, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. I don't. Lally looking for the long way around. Edwards is defending vigorously. And look at this, that's allowing Frankie Montecalvi to close in in one of those Astons. And you gotta watch that third place car, Montecalvo, because he can get the run down in turn one. Let's hear more about the Borchaller pass with Chris. Well, uh, Bob, right before that caution, I checked in with the team, and they were going to be a little bit short on fuel, so uh, they were happy to see that caution going very long. They said they're in good shape now. They uh, can definitely make it to the end of the race, and they think they're in good shape with the Continental tires, too. I asked them about the Mazdas and the Hondas behind them, and they said, you know, we just uh, feel that that rear-wheel drive at Road Atlanta is obviously the way to go. We see those front-wheel drive cars just burning those fronts down a little bit coming out of Turn 7. One thing I've seen John Edwards do is control a race. He's a pretty smart driver. He squares these corners up, slows them up the momentum right here, and then launches. And that, that Camaro launch is really oh, good. Look at this corner. battle. Oh, oh, oh there's the contact. Tags the championship. Point and he gets out of off the road. Oh. Top three, are the top three of the four there got knocked around. Everyone was stacked up there at the apex of turn 10, and Charles was just too committed, coming in there really deep and had nowhere to go. Plies across the grass and runs into the side of the rumba machine. There could be some damage to that car. Now, Bill, oh, a big wreck there. Oh, big. Head on with one of the, I think that's one of the Mustangs. Is that Dave Emperingham in the number 50? No, no he'd be in an Aston. Nope. That was a big hit. I just caught that off the top of the frame there. Was talking about Billy Johnson in the other be Ian James, possibly, in I the think 158. I think that is. Our fourth full course caution. Get the white flag one more round or can pass. Obviously, it's going to be behind the pace car, but anything can happen. If you should break down right now, well, you're tough luck. You're going to lose that position. Shouldn't happen, though. Under the bridge one final time. Down to turn 12, and the checkered flag awaits for John Edwards and Matt Bell in the Stevenson Racing Camaro.
teammate. There's Matt, there's Mike Johnson. Great job by the group. Just missed out on victory, uh, Barber. And there's your ST winner, Terry Borcheller, who brings it home for co-driver Mike Lamara. And a wave to the fans.